Hey there, welcome to the Science Touch. Thanks for joining us. We are talking about components of weight. And so imagine you have this cart sitting here on an ankle track, and we've got a string tied to it running over a pulley up here at the top, and then there's a bucket hanging from the pulley. We've got the track attached to a stand here sitting vertically, and then we've got this angle theta that the track is making with our lab bench that's running horizontally there. All right, so that's our situation. Now, we're going to do a free body diagrams for the cart and for the bucket as if they're two separate objects. You could also work with them as a single system of two masses connected by that string. But let's look at them in two separate objects. Both these objects are in equilibrium at rest. And that means that the ups have to equal the downs and the lefts have to equal the rights. If you look at the cart on the left-hand side here, we have a normal force pointed ver uh, vertically up with respect to the ramp. So it's normal to the ramp or perpendicular to the ramp. We have a force of tension, FT, that is pointed parallel with the ramp. That's the string holding the cart up against a component of the weight. And the weight we're labeling FG with a subscript G and a subscript C, C for cart. And so I've already busted up the... FGC into parallel and perpendicular components. And so in light gray, I have these here, and I'm going to label them now FGC parallel to the ramp. That's not an 11, that's a parallel symbol, two parallel lines. And then we have FGC, the weight of the cart, perpendicular, and there's a perpendicular sign. So it's perpendicular to the ramp. Um, over on the right, we have the bucket here, and that's pretty simple, just a tension force up holding the weight of the bucket, FGB, B for bucket. And if we were to measure the force of tension for various thetas, various angles of the ramp, as we make the ramp steeper or less steep, we'll see a relationship come out of here. And that's because if you look at the FT with the cart, it has to be equal and opposite to the parallel component of the the weight. Now, a pretty cool thing happens here, actually. If we look at the angle that a ramp makes, and then we look at a cart or a box or whatever on the ramp, we look at its weight there, and then we set up a coordinate plane here, so we're with respect to the ramp, and we look at the weight is looking like it's acting at an angle to that coordinate plane. And so components of the weight feel like it's pulling the box down the ramp, parallel to the ramp, and into the wood of the ramp, perpendicular to the ramp. The angle right here is actually equal to the angle of the ramp. And because of our friends in geometry, the angle here is also equal to the angle of the ramp. And these make right triangles, if you can use your imagination and see that. Now, because the FG is the hypotenuse of our right triangle, here, let's draw a right triangle off to the side here so you can kind of see it a little better. So here is our actual weight. Whoops, not a P, just an, an F, FG. And I've kind of tilted it a little bit so that we can see the triangle a little bit better. And here's our angle of interest, theta. So then this side would be the adjacent side in geometry class, and this side would be the opposite side in geometry class, and then this side would be the hype, the hypotenuse. And the adjacent side is a component of the weight that is perpendicular to the surface, the opposite side is the component of the weight that is parallel to the surface of the ramp. If you use your SOHCAHTOA, your sine, cosine, and tangent stuff, then you'll see that sine of theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse. And in this case, that's equal to the parallel component divided by the whole weight. If you rearrange that, you can solve for the parallel component by always multiplying the weight of your object times the sine of theta. And I'm just going to use the abbreviation for sine, which is just sin, S-I-N. Okay, now, same thing happens if you play around with cosine. So if we play around with cosine, let's use a nice pink for this. Let's go a little colorful here. Cosine. So cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. And in this case, I'm going to abbreviate cosine now, just cos. That's equal to the perpendicular component divided by the whole weight. 
rearrange that, multiply both sides by the weight, or just um, get basically get FG perpendicular by itself there on the left, and we're going to see that you can multiply the weight by the cosine of theta, and you'll always be able to find the perpendicular component of the weight. So that's a quick trick if you want to memorize that sine goes with the parallel component of the weight and cosine goes with the perpendicular component of the weight for an object on an angled surface, you'll always be able to bust out those components of weight. One little trick to remember that, so I think, okay, sine is abbreviated like the word sin, right? FG sin theta. Well, sin has that idea of like kind of uh, you know, misbehaving in life a little bit. And so if you're sinning, that'll take you down a slippery slope in life. And that's the sin component here is what's taking the cart down or making the cart want to go down the slippery slope of the track. And that's just how I remember that sin goes with down the slope of the track. Uh oh, my students are coming, so I gotta finish this up. So then the cosine, the cosine, think about co like cooperate. Okay, and that, what is it cooperating with? It's always going to be cooperating with the normal force. In fact, those two have to be equal and opposite in order for this cart not to be hopping up off of the track or going into the wood. All right, well, thank you for sciencing with us. This was the Science Hutch. I was the Hutch. Components of weight was the science. You're the physicist. So you keep on physicsing and have an awesome day. Bye-bye now.